Well, well, well. Watching the beautiful night sky and you're so extremely welcome back to Satis Factory. And today we are going to solve the uh, small issue of power because as you can see it's dead night and my, my my single lamp doesn't even work. So that's extremely sad. Uh, it's a long time due, but this time we will finally get coal power. So in this video I'm going to teach you about efficient, nice working coal power. So to even get access to the coal power we of course need to do some research. So we can go into the hub and check. Let's go. I've unlocked some parts in the previous episodes, which I think you saw, but if you didn't, you should check that. That's how to get Fiskit coupons very nice and easily. So I have been, uh, well, keeping myself busy of actually decorating some things. So here we have it, decorated factory and everything. We have some concrete uh, foundations and I think I think this base is starting to look splendid. We even have some cool shapes. In any case, what we can do is of course scan for coal. So let us scan so we can see wherever it uh, is located. And we need to wait some while. We can even bring up our map and ooh. So here we have, okay, normal, normal, pure, wow, so probably this is a location we probably should check out. So let's check out what new buildings we have available. And here we can see the water extractor is something that's added, very nice, so we can place it now there, not that we need it there, but whatever. We also have the coal generator. And this is the beautiful building that will automatically generate our new power. And uh, well, that is quite handy indeed. And of course, to go with that, we got some uh, pipes, pipelines and pumps, supports. Yeah. yeah, there we see it's over there. Oh, no. Don't tell me it's inside that cloud of bad smoke. Okay, 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 okay. Oh no, it seems we are quite lucky. Down in this valley we can see the coal resources and it is clear from these uh, toxic clouds. So we'll just need to go and down here and clear the area from all the trees and stuff like that so that we can build properly. And there we have it. So here we can see I've cleared this entire area. Um, well, that's great. So now we're finally starting to build on the coal power plant. But before that, um, I'm going to show you this little detail. If we still have power, yes, we do. Um, this is a drop pod and it required to uh, have some uh, electricity given to it. And I think I blew my fuse just now, but it was okay for us to open it because I think I forgot you to sh uh, forgot to show you this. But basically, put in whatever it says it needs uh, and or power, if that's what it needs, and then just uh, well, you can get the hard drive. Yeah, we did. So uh, then we can research the hard drive and the mam, uh, and we can get an alternative recipe like I think I explained but if you're watching this uh, tutorials in not an order and um, stuff like that let's go to hard drive and we're gonna scan it takes 10 minutes and then we can get an alternate recipe so if you don't have that recipe get cast screws and it can be a good idea to actually research early on in game because if you research later on in game you will get more advanced uh, recipes so uh, the basic alternate recipes are actually kind of better than the uh, advanced alternative recipes. So yeah, research away early in game. All right, so it's time to set up the power plant, the coal power plant. So we need to get some initial power. Um, so now my mains is down, but you can just build some biomass burners in the close vicinity, which is exactly what I will do. Uh, we'll just go back here. We have a little small mini base thing. 
we can add so one of these biomass burners produce 30 megawatts which should be nice we can just have some temporary leaves in there so we need to know how much coal we need for each uh, power plant and that will decide if we should set up with the uh, pure sources or with a medium source uh, or the normal i mean uh, we should think a little bit about that because we want to have uh, some pure sources just to bring home we could just gonna connect up this power pipeline and now i can show like in a small model how this works um and we of course need to connect up all our things so we have a little local grid thing here this one produces power which makes it so that this thing can start extracting power and we can insert some coal in this and when we insert some coal in this we can see how many per minute it does require however a little issue here you can see it it hasn't produced power yet uh, because it has no water so we actually need some kind of start power to even get it running so we can add our flowers here the secret fuel i told you about earlier and now you can see it produces a little bit and now we're starting to produce actual power from this thing so now we know we need 15 coal per minute per power plant or per coal generator and how much water do we need? Consumption down here says it's 45 per minute. So if we just go to this little water extractor, we can see it produces 120 per minute. So this should be able to run fine at exactly 45 per minute. But of course, we're going to connect up several into a network. And you might be wondering, okay, Jimenez, what does this all mean? How many do we need? Well, I did some math. So here we have 45 per minute, 45 square meters, no, cubic meters of water per minute. That's a lot of water. And we also need 15 coal per minute. But you can see now that it's running, uh, that it's not running, I mean, if we can see, we don't see like the, the stats anymore. So that's why we had to try it. So... Uh, if we have a source of 120 of coal, which would be two normal or one pure source, and we divide that by 15, because each requires 15, we get eight of these. Uh, so we need eight power plants to, uh, or basically one pure source can uh, power eight power plants um, of coal power. So that's a lot. Now, how much water do we need? Well, each water constructor produces, uh, or water constructor, what am I saying? Each water pump pumps out 120 square meters of water per minute. So, and they require, so, okay, so eight times, so eight power plants times 45, that's 360. And you can clearly see that 360 divided by 3 is 120. So the answer is we need 1, 2, 3 of these and 8 of these. So let us go and uh, select wherever we should be uh, having it. I think that this one or the one behind it may be reasonable. I think we're gonna take uh, this one down here. And we're going to add a little miner here. Before we decide anything, we are going to see where the global grid is. And here is the global grid. So we're going to adapt everything towards uh, or for the global grid. Because uh, I have started to like the global grid a lot. And if you don't know what the global grid is, you should probably check out like the first tutorial in this little series. Splendid. We have laid a little foundation and spawned our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight coal generators. So we of course need to connect these up uh, and uh, it's 120 source of uh, coal because it's a pure source. So we will be needing to use Mark II belts to connect up uh, to the mains. Now we will use Mark I belt to connect to each machine. Now you see we have two uh, tubes here or 
two connections for uh, pipelines. And there is a reason why we do this. You can see on the pipeline here that it only transports 300 square meters of fluid per minute. And we need 360 square meters of fluid. Uh, so one pipe will not be enough. We need two pipelines in order to produce uh, or um, transport the water up here. But we shall begin with connecting up the... Uh, this little thing. Now we have connected them up up there so, and now we can see this little smart feature. We use this uh, conveyor wall mount that we unlocked last episode and you can see the green line here tells us that this is connected up to like everything. And then we can just have it here. And now we're going to connect up these pipes a little bit. So you can see this foundation is at this layer and this foundation is at this and we have a wall here. So if we just take foundations and put them in the middle, like this, when we drag it down like this, we can click R until it says vertical. And this one goes there. And we get these super nice, very straight lines. Very nice indeed. So we're going to add a water extractor and if it's red, it means the water is uh, too shallow. And we'll just hold control to align these. So now we need to connect them up in an interesting way uh, in order to divide up the flow. Here we have this water pump going on this little pipeline. And here we have these two connecting up to uh, this pipeline. So uh, to get the flow even, We'll just connect up the pipes together. We have one more problem to solve. We have these vertical pipes and we need to pump up the water here. So if we look at production, we can see that the water extractor can be automatically transport the fluids a maximum of 10 meters. So this is 4, 8, 16, uh, yeah. You can see it's 16, 20, 24. I guess it's 24, almost 25, uh, kind of 28 meters. And uh, then we need to add a little other part. So under logistics, you have also gotten the water pump, which can lift stuff 20 meters. So um, we might need more if it's not perfect, but we should actually only need one pump. And of course, we need to make sure that it pumps the right direction by using the scroll wheel. We can see the arrow here. So this is the right direction. So say this is, uh, well, four, eight ish meters. We'll add them here and yeah, they should be able to pump upwards like this. We'll add another one here and we just connect them up to power. And these will be pumping when we have some power. Oh God, that's the wrong direction. And there we go. So we're gonna divide up the water source between these four and four. So eight in total, but we're gonna have them four and four. To have some sort of buffer, we will add a fluid buffer per system. So for one of the pipes, we'll have one tank here. And for the other sections of the pipe, we can have them there. So why do we have this kind of fluid buffer here? Well, they'll fill up. The thing is, uh, if the coal power gets no water, uh, the coal well, power plants will stop. If it gets no coal, it will also stop. And then your fuses and electricity may just collapse and break. So we're going to add down here too. Uh, we're also gonna have a little container to have a, a kind of little coal buffered. And up here, we're gonna have a little water buffer close to the power plant so that even though if the power just goes down for some random reason, the power plant will not run out of coal and the, uh, well, power plants will also not run out of water. So we just add these up here and it should work mighty fine. So here we are, we have connected up the water we have connected up the coal and we even have a little small buffered zone thing. So we'll begin, begin with trying to make this entire facility work by making it pump some water so that we can get started 
to get some water to the factory to see if our water setup works in order to then provide it with coal. And we are waiting with connecting up the line, the mains that go to the coal power plant, the coal generators and the mine and we're just going to try and see if we can connect up the water. Well you know what we have to do by now, we'll need to add just some extra biomass burners to get this uh, water pumping in the start. We disconnect the power from the mains and we just run our little local biomass facility here and it should be enough to power these pumps. And there we go, last one, and start. So here we are, producing. You can see the water is starting to flow here. The water pumps are spinning up, beautiful. And ah, and here we can see the motion. You can see pa pa pam, dun dun dun. It's like tut tut tut. And this tells us the direction the fluid is going. So this is how you know and the distance between these rings if they are really tight together like this up here or if they're really far in between kind of decides if they have uh, water inside of them or not. So here we can see are these powering up or is it so? We shall see. The water comes here Ah, and here we see the water starts pumping. And these ones are also getting there. Yeah, so here we can see the pumps are doing a job and we are getting water up here. Beautiful. So this is slowly filling up and that's the exact buffer we want. You can see the water is coming. And oh, right, I haven't connected up so we're gonna connect them up <laughs> I've only connected up one of them so four and four uh, but uh, at least we uh, did the uh, we did the fluid buffers so we can let it pump up here and just connect it up and uh, start from there when you're connecting up the pipes by the way you may th see that they look here and you kind of want to reverse it and R doesn't work well thing is you need to start from the right end so you just go from here and there and now it's uh, the proper way. So they are kind of directional. It matters what direction you uh, have them in. You can see these are actually pumping water now because we have some water pressure in the buffer system. It zippers into some water here. Very nice. To align the pipes properly, you can just glide over with the junction here. And when you hold control, you will see it snap at some certain point right here and when it snaps it means you're exactly straight a, a straight connection just like this so you can actually snap them just like conveyors it's very handy so we're going to connect up this facility they're connected to all of these um we're just gonna do a little temporary collect connection here connect it up to the miner too and connect up this to the rest of the network. We're gonna replace that later, but just so we have something. Uh, and then we're going to actually hand mine some coal. And you can probably guess that we're going to put this coal into the machines that already have some water, and they should be producing power from the start. And this should be able to keep the entire network running until uh, the coal actually comes up from the mine. Uh, let's hurry up and run up here so that the water will keep flowing and we might need to check the water now we have an elevation here so it's possible we will run into some water issues I do know that this had full one since we last checked we only need to input a few of them you can see wow we're burning coal oh my god do you see that power there that's right Okay, this one has water, you can see on the pipe, I can see that this has water. Insert some there. This doesn't have a lot of water, so we can input something here. You can see we have enough water to generate some power. And the ones behind here, they will get the coal last. It's a balanced system, so they will eventually balance themselves out, so it's all fine. But these ones, yeah, you can see they are already getting their fill of coal. 
So to get this system running, we're going to put the coal. This one is in the most need of coal, so we can put everything that we got there. And here we can see it's coming, but it's taking some time. They should have max capacity. This should balance it out. Uh, now what we basically need to do is to just wait and see. And of course, don't forget that you'll need a Mark II belt here. But that's pretty obvious by now. I feel I remind you of this every single video, but it's important. And later on, we'll actually have a Mark II pipelines, and that can be a hard thing too, to make sure that you have like Mark II pipelines. But that's a long way down the line, so don't worry about that yet. But that can be a tricky thing too. Okay, so the coal keeps coming. The water is pumping, and soon enough, we're going to see. Uh, one thing that's good with the coal power plants or the coal generators is that they are always running at full capacity even though we are not using full capacity. So they are not adaptive in the same way that biomass burners are. And that's very good for us actually because otherwise they would never be efficient. If it was like that they would only be efficient if we were running at max capacity and almost blowing the fuse. So thankfully they just made them run at full capacity no matter what and the extra power they produce I guess it just gets wasted. You can kind of see that some of these generators they are glowing red and that is because they do not have any uh, fuel. So before we connect this thing up to our main power source, like the power mains, um, we are going to just wait a tiny bit because we want them all to have coal. We want the like power production to be stable. When we connect this up, if everyone is not running here, uh, we have a high uh, chance of actually blowing the fuse of our entire setup. So that is why we have our local production here. What we basically want to do is make sure that we are running all these coal power plants at max capacity already. Because if we do that, oh, you can see this one has a problem. So this one has 100 coal, but it doesn't have any water. And we need to find out why. Why does it have so little water? Is it not connected up? So to investigate we can look into this thing because see this pipe has water here it has water here and for some reason it's not connected up there and that affects this power plant this okay that's interesting so this entire pipe section for some reason is not connected up and it looks like it's connected up, but it actually has to be. Satisfactory is weird like this. Apparently, this is not connected. So we're going to remove this line. And we're going to replace it and see if adding a junction like this kind of broke the connection. This is stuff that can happen. And there we see it starts flowing. And the water comes in there. And the water comes in there. So yeah, when we added this little junction here, this one right here, it for some reason broke the connection and that is why we are here and checking everything out. So we'll just wait a little bit to make sure that every each, each and every one of these are running at full capacity. We can see down here that some of the water pumps are running at full speed and some are shilling out a little bit, pendling back and forth to see if they really need to pump. Uh, and as this setup is balanced, every each, each and every of these water pumps will run at full capacity when we are 100% efficient. So let us wait a little bit and see. Oh yeah, there we can see all of them starts to spin up again. And well, that's good. I think we're starting to reach the good capacity. So we'll just stay here and supervise them and see if any one of them are turning red. And okay, what's the issue? It doesn't have enough fuel. We did the calculations all right, so the fuel will balance itself out. But we are here to supervise just to make sure. And the fuel will get balanced out when these earlier ones are full. Like this is 57, this is 80, and this one you can see it's full. 
So if we go down and check here, we can see it's actually moving very slow in this area. And this is what we are waiting for to all of these earlier ones to basically fill up. If you just bring all the coal they need, like 800, and just fill them manually, they will be basically efficient right up from the start. But, well, whatever. Alright, it seems like we are finally getting some stable power here. You can see the water is seeming to be stable. The lines have just now smoothened themselves out here. So if you have problems with water, check the uh, connections and we combine them down there and then we ported them up half and half, uh, joining the pipes together just like we did down there. Uh, is absolutely a valid method of making this work. And having buffers kinda can make you just bypass any fluctuations that might otherwise cause a problem. So having a fluid buffer in a coal power plant setup is always a super good idea. And we have the vertical pumps down there and the vertical pumps they are of course trying to uh, get this water up this vertical slope and if you need to transport your water upwards for aesthetical or other reasons you might add more if it's more than 20 meters plus whatever level uh, the water comes from that these can like natively push them up uh, by 10 meters but a pump like this can pump it up extra uh, 20. You can see they are pumping away there. And we can actually check now onto the water plants here. This is 100% efficient. So we are not getting uh, bottlenecked. This one is going down a little bit. You can see here 86. So we see if it balances itself out. If there appears a problem, we will notice it very soon enough. But right now, you can see our power was stable, but now it isn't, okay. So, we can see here that I found a little issue that was uh, causing some problematic water flow. I placed this not exactly the right area. You can see, head lift is 22 meters and recommended max is 20. This one is 21 meter and recommended max is 20. So uh, to solve this issue, we actually need more pumps. Um, sometimes we can use some placement shenanigans to make it work anyways, but uh, it's just too high of a distance. So we add a pump there and a pump there. And now they are both pumping up here. This one has a head lift. Give me 13. Let's see if we can jump down on them. This one has a head lift of 13 and this one also has a head lift of 13. That's great. So now our power should be stable. And this is the reason when we are setting up a coal power plant, it's a little bit tricky. And we actually have to stay with the plant for a while to see kind of if it works all right or if we have any issues. So I'm kind of glad I did, I did this vertical setup so that you really can get an understanding on how fluid mechanics work. And now we should be getting them all running at 100% efficiency. You can see here it's running at 100 and this one is running at 100. Well that's very excellent. So how are the coal power plants doing? This one, it seems to be getting its fuel now. We don't have the no water issue no more. This one then. Seems to be just refilling at the exact speed we need. Might get some fluctuations, but it seems to be stable now. Which actually means we can connect up this facility to power mains which is of course always a little bit scary. And the beautiful thing about biomass burners is that you can use the biomass burners as some actual um, like batteries because the, it looks like they are burning them, but you can see the power is like, even though we have some production of coal and stuff like that, 
we don't really need this power that's in the biomass burners and they have a lower kind of power priority so these will not get used unless um, the energy system like the energy network actually requires it so that is pretty neat that's actually why i have as a recommendation to keep your biomass burner power plant like not the like not the like small one like this but the main one keep it around for a while because you might want it you might want it later on Okay, did we kill power by connecting everything up like this? Seems we did. Alright, max consumption, capacity. Let's see if it goes there. If the production... Yeah, seems that we gotten some stable power now. So that's what happened when we connect up the mains. That's why we want our coal power plants to be running smoothly before we do this. And there are the removed biomass burners. And power seems to be running straight now. Isn't that quite beautiful? Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is quite nice indeed. We have the water flowing at 100%. We have fluid buffers. We have coal buffers. We have the efficient mine. And we have eight awesome power plants that provide us with like 1,000 megawatts or whatever it was so congratulations you have a coal power plant isn't that quite nice now i will share a little tip here that can be quite useful if you don't want to mess with this kind of three water extractors and combine them up like this with fluid buffers or something like that if you run into issues and you know, or if you're just a little bit lazy what you can do is having two water extractors and boost one of both of them actually boost both of them with a uh, like power shard so we can produce 180 per minute because then you can easily divide it up by one boosted extractor to one power plant and the other boosted extractor to the other four so one one boosted goes to four the other boosted goes to four and you can skip the third one that's an optional solution but i always try to show you how to solve things without using power shards if we uh, can in a size in, in a decent size underclocking is usually better than overclocking so another thing you could do is have four extractors <laughs> and underclock them to fit the values that also works in any case uh, what we did before was research this uh, um, hard drive and when you get the hard drive um, like research after 10 minutes you can choose some different options here and here we can see uh, i got the option to produce iron like wire from uh, like copper wire from iron okay we can have fused wire so another way to produce this and we can produce charcoal well that's minecrafty yeah some of these recipes aren't very good but it's random and you'll actually have to choose one you can't just you can't skip it so I'll guess, I'll guess we'll have the fused, no, I don't know. We have more iron and copper, so maybe, uh, maybe we can produce iron wire. Okay, whatever. Anyways, enjoy your coal power plant, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want some other tips, please check the playlist in the description, and you'll have all the previous episodes, and of course, as always, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to stay tuned for the next episode. This has been your host, Jim Odism, and we are signing out from Satisfactory. Bye-bye.